Starship is the most powerful rocket in the world, and it needs an engine to match if we're going to get to Mars. SpaceX has been pushing the limits of its Raptor engine, sometimes even exceeding the limits, in the name of science and gathering precious data. We recently saw a record-breaking test and got some fascinating context from Elon on Twitter. Let's talk about everything we learned, but first, let's take a look at what makes a rocket engine, so we fully understand the latest development. A rocket engine is so much more than just the engine bells that we see poking out of the bottom of boosters and other vehicles. Keeping things simple, a rocket engine needs plumbing to get the fuel from the tanks and into the right place at the right time at exactly the right temperatures and pressures to be ignited. Simple! This usually involves turbo pumps, though it's sometimes accomplished with just pressure in the tanks alone. The turbo pumps feed fuel and oxidizer into the engine through a thing called an injector plate that properly mixes the two together for optimal combustion. This mixing and subsequent combustion takes place in the COMBUSTION CHAMBER! Then the hot exhaust passes through a nozzle that accelerates it even faster and all of it shoots out the engine bells and vital thrust is produced. Simple! So with all that background, let's take a look at the engine test and the tweets. First, let's watch a few seconds of the test in question. That is pretty spectacular. All right, now let's take a look at the tweet. In the tweet, Elon says that Raptor version 3 just achieved 350 bar chamber pressure and produced 269 tons of thrust, and he thanks the SpaceX propulsion team, as he should. This is a pretty amazing achievement for the company, on top of all of their other amazing achievements. The Raptor engine is already state of the art, and it just keeps getting better. But what does 350 bar chamber pressure mean, and why is it important? Well, the laws of thermodynamics, specifically Carnot's theorem, thanks to us, dictates that high temperatures and pressures are best for thermal efficiency. The higher temperatures and pressures mean more complete combustion, but they're of course trickier to contain, especially when you're optimizing for mass on something that needs to be as light as possible because it's going into space. If you push the limit too much, well... So chamber pressure is important because the higher SpaceX can get that pressure, the more thrust and higher efficiency they can get from a given engine size and a given amount of fuel. Of course, there's loads more that goes into all this. I'm not a rocket scientist, but it would take way longer than an eight minute YouTube video. Anyways, we measure chamber pressure in PSI, millipascals, and bar. And 350 bar is a record smashing number. So how does that number stack up? Which engine previously held the record? You might think the highest chamber pressure was on the mighty F1 engines that powered the legendary Saturn V rocket and got us to the moon, but those were operated at a surprisingly low 70 bar. How about the RS-25 engines on the space shuttle and SLS? I know shuttle people, they're SSMEs, I'm sorry. Well, they're rated at 206 bar. The Russian RD-180 used to power the Atlas V runs at a very respectable 257 bar. An experimental Russian engine, the RD-701, previously held the record for combustion chamber pressure at 300 bar, but it was never used on an actual rocket. SpaceX broke that record in August of 2020, as you can see from this tweet from Elon. SpaceX has continually iterated on Raptor and has since been pushing Raptor successively further as it fine-tunes and evolves the engine. There have been many iterations, probably beyond what we even know as Raptor V1, Raptor V2, and now Raptor V3. One thing I'm really curious about is if Raptor V3 will be a drop-in replacement for version 2, as the vehicles themselves were actually different to accommodate the change from version 1 to version 2. Knowing this would enable us to infer a little better exactly when Raptor 3 will be flying versus just being tested. All this iteration takes lots of work, as we can see on our 24-7 live feed of the testing McGregor Live. Sometimes engines blow up, sometimes by mistake, and sometimes on purpose. But despite the occasional engine-rich combustion, the results are worth it. The more efficient and higher thrust Raptor can be, the better Starship will be for it. At this point, I should probably stop and briefly mention that rocket engines run at a rated chamber pressure. End of the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance. One that is known to be stable and safe and are often tested at higher chamber pressures for the purposes of research and development or just establishing safety margins. What SpaceX was doing was exactly that type of testing. I'm not sure what Raptor is rated at for flight, but I think saying around 300 bar is safe. 
all that is to say, we're comparing rated chamber pressures with experimental chamber pressures on flying rockets and not flying rockets, and just keep all that context in mind as we compare numbers. So on May 12th, we saw this epic test on McGregor Live. Check out the flame coming out of the engine. It's noticeably hitting the flame bucket at the bottom of the tripod test stand. Look at those mock diamonds, and grab a mock diamond shirt from shop.nessasbaseflight.com. Here's a comparison with a more standard test for a reference on flame length. Thankfully, on Twitter, Elon confirmed that this test was in fact the 350 bar test. He added that SpaceX hadn't expected the engine to survive a full duration firing. Again, they were pushing things to the limits. This isn't the flight pressure Raptors will be rated at, at least not for the near future. Taking a look at shutdown and comparing it with a RUD on the tripod stand, that's rapid unscheduled disassembly for any new folks, we can see that shutdown looked pretty clean. No RUDs here, which matches what Elon said and again is quite impressive. One interesting thing here is the apparent stability in the graph that Elon posted, especially when you compare it to the graph from August of 2020 when Raptor reached 330 bar. To use a technical rocket science term here, there's a whole lot of more wiggles in that graph. Let's take just a moment here and look at this and contemplate 33 of these bad boys side by side going all at once. More fire is more better. Most of the time. The entire Starship program hinges on the team in McGregor doing this work day in and day out and making the Raptor the best engine it can be, and it certainly seems as though they are doing their job well as we see Raptor reaching ever higher pressures and levels of thrust. It's a shame they don't get more attention. We wait for hours and read the tea leaves for every Starship static fire, but McGregor does multiple firings a day. In fact, there's been over a thousand engine tests since we started McGregor Live just over a year ago. In this mosaic, which is actually a member perk that we like to do each month to show off all the testing that goes on, all of the tests are synchronized to start at the same time. You can see each individual video blink out after a test ends. This is a great way to visualize just how much work goes on at SpaceX's McGregor Texas facility, and appreciate not just the number of tests, but the duration of many of them. So what's next? Will SpaceX push the chamber pressure of Raptor even higher? You better believe we'll be watching on McGregor Live. Alright, that's it for this one. We'll leave you with the full, uninterrupted test for your enjoyment.